We have to have translation running, <laughs> just as you did in your film. Let's get That's to it. Right. Anthony Baxter, uh, you have made, you have directed and created a feature documentary called You've Been Trumped, um, which pre premiered last night at the Gene Siskel Film Center, but people have another chance to see it tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow afternoon, yes. Tomorrow afternoon yeah. at 5.15 in the afternoon at the Siskel Center. I, I really, uh, this was a stunningly made film. Congratulations. It's clearly not your first effort, right? Well, I've worked as a journalist filmmaker for about eight years. Um, I was working in radio before that and then moved into making documentaries. And so I'd made uh, some films, but nothing of this length. I mean, this was the first time I'd made a film designed for cinema release. How, how many minutes? How many minutes? It's 96 minutes long, yeah. yeah. So. Um, but it felt, it felt to me that uh, I had to make it really that long. I mean, partly because we tried to get funding for the film um, and we were, we were refused all funding in, in, from the broadcasters. So we had to... What we did is, uh, you know, I remortgaged my house in Montrose and we went onto the internet and basically raised the money to make the film because I felt it was a very important story. I mean, this is, story is about Donald Trump building a golf course resort on one of the last wilderness areas of Scotland. It is... According to the scientists, the crown jewels of Scotland's natural heritage are equivalent, if you like, of the Amazon rainforest. And Donald Trump uh, announced he was going to be building a golf course resort consisting of 1,500 houses, a skyscraper hotel, and two golf courses on this beautiful, beautiful site. And, and part of the, the, the significance of this site is that it's a site of special scientific interest, which is the highest accolade you can have in Scotland for a protected site. It's extremely important for scientists to discover more about global warming, essentially, and to discover more about the interaction between the sea and the coastline. And so if you lose that, as has happened, it's been bulldozed, it's been lost forever, that key, uh, that key thing has gone, and it's all in the name of development. But the development is not bringing the jobs that was promised. Anthony, you had, at the start of your film, um, beautiful cinematography of this spot, of this pristine um, place that you just described. It was called the Mir... Mir it's called the Many Estate. It's, Many a, it's, estate. It's, a, it's a very historical area, but Donald Trump announced fairly recently that he didn't like the name, uh, and he was renaming it the Great Dunes of Scotland. Um, you know, uh, which, so in a, in a way, throwing away those ancient ordnance survey maps, which is historically what it was called, the Many Estate, and saying, we're going to rename it. I, I don't like the name. I'm going to rename it the Great Dunes of Scotland. But the point, point is, you know, the people locally know it as the many estate. That's how it's always been. Um, but what I was going to say is, you had, you were, how long did this project take? Because you were filming before it was ruined, up through the ruination. Um, so how long did, what was that span of time? Well, the span of time was uh, about 18 months, really. Um, I followed it on film for about a year, but it took me about six months to really get to know the residents, and that was very important because Donald Trump had branded one of them, Michael Forbes, a pig. He said he lives in a slum, I don't like his house, he should get if, out of the way of my resort, and he was trying to get all the local people to sell to him. If you care to shred a wit for any reason for Donald Trump before seeing this, you would... Yeah. The personification of evil itself. We liked this guy Forbes. We liked him in his kilt. We liked him on his tractor. Uh, he seemed like quite a guy. He reminded me of like a kind of an old back to the land guy, although he was always on the land. Uh, he had a farm that looks like farms everywhere. Look. You know, had some newer looking sheds, some old funky sheds. A bunch yeah. of rusting equipment hanging around That's waiting exactly, to be made it's useful. Exactly a what Shetland is. pony. Uh, yeah, a great with Shetland a long pony. Mane. <laughs> I mean, I loved the the women. Uh, Mary, Mary was the older woman, and Susan was the younger woman who chain smoked every every single. <laughs> yeah, that's frame right. She was talking in. about the environment. That's oh, right. The I mean, they, they are they are um, really lovely people. They're the kind of people if you turned up at their homes, they would invite you in for a cup of tea. Molly Forbes, the elderly lady, is 86. She lives in a, a little caravan, a really cozy little caravan next to Michael's house. Michael Forbes, who you were just talking about. 
And Donald Trump br branded her home an environmental hazard. Uh, not quite sure he where the know. environmental hazard comes into it, but it's a, it's a very, very lovely place to visit, and they're lovely people. And yeah, he's kind of like uh, Romney in that he's out of touch with the people. I mean, if no, he, he's so much more dangerous. He's just probably. running roughshod. I mean, th this this is. I'm sorry, it's a tragedy. It, it's a it's an extreme tragedy. The story you're telling and so important to be shown. It is important. I think the, that, that's why I wanted to make the film. I felt very strongly that it was a story that people should know. And what had happened locally is the two newspapers in Aberdeen had been running the story but saying, this is going to be a wonderful thing for the area. It's going to bring all these jobs. They never reported the environmental impact. They, they made the local people into caricatures. I mean, as I mentioned, Donald Trump came over. He branded Michael Forbes, uh, uh, who you were just talking about, as a pig, and Michael is is a thoroughly decent, honest man who is extremely hardworking. I have to say as well, and 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 you know, I just think that Michael is is symbolic of, of so many people in Scotland. As you say, it's a typical farm, but it's also typical of any working farm in America. And I think when we showed the film in Birmingham, Alabama. That image really resonated with those people in, in Birmingham as well because of the farming there. And, and you know, one, one, one guy who saw the film in Alabama gave me a bottle of uh, Birmingham's, Alabama's finest whiskey to take back to Michael <laughs> as, a, as a indication of the strength of feeding the people. Oh, have how there. wonderful. How's how wonderful. it been? Have I mean, you been taking the film around? We have. I mean, we, we premiered the film at, uh, in Toronto, and then since then, we've been taking it around to festivals in the United States. So we went to Michael Moore, and picked it for his film festival at the Traverse City Film Festival in Michigan. We've been to Denver, St. Louis. We also did a screening at uh, the Hamptons International Film Festival, uh, where Alec Baldwin saw the film. And I met with him last week in New York, and he was saying, first of all, that it made a big impact on him, uh, but he's asked me actually onto his radio show in New York to talk about it because I think the thing, we, and that's why people like Alec Baldwin and Rosie O'Donnell here in Chicago who have seen the film and has made impacts on them, it's important because for me to get the film out to a wider audience is important. We, you know, going to film festivals is great and it's fantastic to, to get to show it to yeah. audiences around the United States. But really, the important thing is here, Donald Trump is seen as a cartoon character here. I mean, there's no doubt about that. This is the man who questioned the birth certificate of Barack Obama, the United States president. And he's also... And it made him very popular for about 20 minutes. Well, we, we all remember the picture of him at the correspondence dinner, you know, and and at the White House. And I think the thing is that although people here think of him as a cartoon character, what this film does is it gives people, if you like, the real substance to what Donald Trump is really capable of. Oh, what he's exactly. capable of here is destroying, this is the ultimate one percenter, you know, destroying one of the last wilderness areas. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it's breathtakingly horrific, actually. Um, there was a part in your film that, um, you know, well, it just, it just, you know, the, the steps increased when he interrupted the water, cut off the water to at least Michael. I couldn't get if it was affecting the others It was well. other residents as well. Yeah, the water supply was cut off. We never knew how or why. Um, and it was essentially to Michael Forbes, his wife Sheila, and Molly Forbes, and another family living locally. And the water supply had been cut off for uh, seven days when we discovered this. We went to interview one of Donald Trump's workers to ask him questions about it. And then working like Donald Trump's private security force, the local police swooped in, arrested me and my colleague Richard, threw rather, us into... Rather roughly. Yeah, that they was did. as far as I got watching the movie. We didn't, uh, just so everyone, we didn't get the film till late last night. Sure. Katie because stayed up snow. and watched it. Well, I can uh, tell you what... It to I, me. I, I can tell you what happens next, uh, you know, essentially is we're then taken to prison cells in Aberdeen, we're we then we then have our equipment confiscated from us. We're charged with a criminal. I mean, offense. it's almost fairy tale. It's almost fairy tale in the epic proportions to which this big bad man, you know, insulted and and came in and totally trounced down this jewel of a place and its residents and its traditions, and 
you know, brought along the flying monkeys with him, uh, you know, who swooped down and took you out of your, you know, whenever you got in the way. Whenever well, you got in the way, there was these security forces. It's flipping terrifying. Well, let's go back to the arrest. I, I When I was watching it, it, it seemed like the older officer suddenly be, he came, became very aggressive uh, and uh, was demanding to know people's names the and the, trying to get the camera. What was the role of the younger officer? He, he just seemed to sort of stood by. I'm wondering if he'll turn out to be a good guy or a bad guy well, when he I grows up. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying there. I mean, what we, what we, the, the local police have done since then is they've had a cover-up whitewash inquiry led by an internal officer, uh, uh, which just as frankly it, it, it is, is completely and utterly unacceptable. I mean, this was the first time in living memory, according to the National Union of Journalists in, in Britain, that two journalists have been arrested and put in prison cells for simply doing an interview. Um, and, you know, this isn't, a, this isn't acceptable in a, in, a, in a civilized society. Repercussions of that? Well, there haven't been any. Um, you know, we uh, are now considering our options through the National Union of Journalists because there's no point, there's no point, for example, of the Scottish government doing some kind of investigation into this. I mean, the Scottish government is, is your, <laughs> gave Donald Trump the green light to build this resort throughout its own strict environmental laws in order to have this thing done. And so any inquiry by the Scottish government would be completely tied in with the police and Donald Trump. I mean, you know, the, the three things go hand in hand. The police the Scottish government and Donald Trump. Let, let me ask you a little bit about the Scottish government. Uh is it, a, is it a conservative government? Is it a pro, pro, supposedly a liberal or progressive government? Uh, what's the state and of it, politics do in... Do you have a Labour Party there uh, as well? We do. We have a Labour Party, a Conservative Party, a Liberal Democrat Party, the Scottish National Party... And a Green Party. Party. And a Green Party. The, Sc the Scottish National Party is the, is the ruling party in Scotland, which is fighting for independence. Yeah, that's why I would... Then, independence with the help of Donald Trump, who probably has roots there in some form well, you or see, fashion. The, oh, the he'll come out with a kilt on any day if he hasn't already. <laughs> He's... He's incredible. Well, the worry, he has no shame. The, the worrying thing is, is that you know, the Scottish National Party, which is led by the First Minister Alex Salmond, he is the First Minister of Scotland, the you know, in charge of the country, and it is Alex Salmond who gave the green light to this development. Right. Now, I, I feel that the opposition parties have have not taken this on in the way they should have done. I mean, this is of extreme importance. This whole issue, and the Green Party have gone to gone a certain distance on this, but not enough. I mean, this is such an important issue for the future of Scotland that if, they, if the government is prepared to sell off its crown jewels of natural heritage to somebody like Donald Trump, oh. um, in order to see a hotel and housing development built on a wilderness area, then we have to ask ourselves the question, what, what does the future for Scotland hold if it is a, a purely independent country, a, a completely independent country. Anthony Baxter, filmmaker of You've Been Trumped. They, um, how many of your fellow countrymen have seen this film? Well, we tried to premiere it at the government-funded Edinburgh International Film Festival. Uh, they refused to show the film. So we had our own green carpet premiere in Aberdeen, and we invited all the residents. The local newspapers completely blacklisted the film, and they continue to do so. They haven't even mentioned Gee, it. Gee, who did you... Who did you whose feet did you step on that all these people... <laughs> well, I it's, mean, a, really? it's extraordinary, but what's happened is... We, Although they, you know, all these all these, these organisations weren't helping us, we did the the Aberdeen uh, premiere, and we notched up the the fastest advanced ticket sales since the first Harry Potter movie, and and since then the film has been showing in cinemas across the country and building an audience. And so what we've been doing is filling out cinemas in Glasgow, in Edinburgh, Inverness, and some of the smaller smaller parts of Scotland as well, some of the smaller settlements, you know, towns and villages across the country, and we. Can, we're going to continue to do that, but we also want to get it into cinemas in England as well, and to just just try and get more people to see the film. It's a yes. very important message we're trying to get across, and that's why coming here to Chicago and being able to show to the Gene Siskel Film Centre, which incidentally is a fantastic uh, theatre, I love it. Yeah, um, and they've been so supportive and helpful in getting our people. film out to a wider audience. 
to what? Say that to a wider audience, yeah. and that's what's important because, you know, so often as a filmmaker, you, as as I've found along this this road, is you're you're not getting any kind of support and getting the film out there, and so Michael Moore helping us getting it into Travis City. I mean, you know, the Trump organization have bra has branded the film a failure, but it's now won eight international film festival awards. Ah, and good. What a total. I mean, I just, he makes me so crazy. He, I mean, he said things like, I've stabilized them. He's, you know, with the shock of hair. I've stabilized, it's speaking of the dunes. That's right. I've I mean, stabilized them. Which is the We've worst possible thing you can do. great environmental support. I mean, he just lies through his teeth. Well, I, the, the thing is, the facts, the facts always speak differently. I mean, he has said that he has great environmental support. There is not one credible environmental group in Scotland supporting his proposal. The Scottish Wildlife Trust, Friends of the Earth Scotland, Scottish Natural Heritage, all these groups bitterly opposed this plan and said it would be an absolute disaster. For their words, not mine, a disaster for Scotland. And yet, this, this development was given the go-ahead. He has got no support from any environmental groups and stabilizing the dunes is the worst possible thing you can do to those dunes because it stops them from moving and shifting in the way that makes them so unique. Anthony, I want to invite you to visit our dunes right over here, two blocks away. They're under snow now, but... They're coming back. They're, um, it's a, a recovering uh, uh, program, restoring the dunes program over here uh, at Lake Michigan. I'd love to see them, yeah. <laughs> It's um, they're something small. we they're small but they're they're wonderful. I mean they and are. uh Well it's a beautiful city and it and the thing is is that I think the reason this film resonates with audiences around the US and elsewhere is that everybody has their own story of this nature. They have the story of the tycoon coming in, riding roughshod over the lives of ordinary people in our natural world. And the point is, you know, our planet is such a precious resource, we don't have many of these wilderness areas left. I mean, there are very, very few of them left. And if we keep allowing this kind of thing to happen, the Earth then what's going to happen? Get the get up and eat us alive. And future generations will not have these places of wilderness to enjoy. What's there the, was a moment... Sorry. I, I was going to say, what's the status of... Uh, <clears throat> the situation now, I mean, there was an attempt to buy up all the land. Uh, Michael <clears throat> Forbes wouldn't sell his land. He still has his land. He does. Uh, what's happened now is on in June of this year, the first golf course is due to open. That's one golf course, a flimsy temporary clubhouse, not the economic benefits that were that was promised. I mean, we gave all the figures of this development to the London School of Economics, who looked over them and said, rather than 6,000 jobs created, the number created would actually be closer to zero. So, in actual fact, what you have now is one golf course, a site of special scientific interest, destroyed, uh, none of the benefits that were promised, and Donald Trump is now saying, because he knows the film has galvanized support against the development, I mean, people, I would be surprised if there were more than 5% of people in Scotland in favor of this development, and he knows the film has galvanized the support uh, against the development, and so now he's saying, I'm going to give up, I'm going to get out, but he's blaming the idea of building a wind farm off the coast as his get-out clause. Great. Let and he him. says this is an environmental, he's calling this this wind farm environmentally irresponsible, <laughs> uh, which is going to bring green energy to the people so, of Scotland. So I didn't see the end of the film, but there is, uh, or the, the situation is now that he scaled down the proposal to build all these golf courses. That's, only happened, that's only happened in the last week that he said that. I think he's just so concerned about the I film. I think your film has bring, had something to do with that. I think, I think yes. that's true. Good work, Anthony. Good work. You know what? I, I just I just want to say this one thing I guess I keep forgetting. One of the coolest um, widgets, I don't know what, uh, things in the film is the interspersal of scenes from the local hero. That's a right. local hero. The which was movie. one of the all-time best films ever made. Um, I mean, right up there. Yeah, also, I, tell you, I tell you what also I like. Also in Scotland, right? I like the little golf putting thing, like you would see at a kiddie golf thing, where at it had the art a very ugly uh, sculpture of Donald Trump's mouth with people putting over putting an American into flag. His mouth. 
and uh, people putting uh, golf balls into his mouth. And, and the American flag was done as a dollar sign. One of the things that uh, you got to hear from at least one of us, Anthony, is watching this as an American when that poor man says, you know, if a Londoner came over and tried to do this, we'd send him back in. But no. This this gringo with full pockets, and I just want you to I think, know, I think the, we're outraged I as well. I think that, you know, people have said to me in some of the screenings, I hope you realize that Donald Trump is not representative of American people. And the people in Scotland know that. I mean, Scotland and, and the US has such a great relationship. I think, you know, the thing is, is that Donald Trump, as characterized in that, uh, in the art exhibition, which you just referred to, you know, where this sculpture is made, you know, he is, he is an atypical, American and people don't see him as representative. And just to say, by the way, the local hero film which you, you mentioned, this classic film, some people will remember, you know, Burt Lancaster is the um, tycoon coming over wanting to build a, an oil refinery. And he he basically gets some won support, over. but one guy holds out against him. And, it, and there was such the a parallel to it's, the real life story. It's so great. His line of, I still actually, I'm still working it. The man with the shed on the on the beach, That's who's right. lived there for decades, who's standing in the way of the Trump-esque thing, and doesn't he finally win over Burt Lancaster? He does, and that's the, the that's the difference between the two stories in Local Hero, the Big fiction. Difference. You know, Burt Lancaster is won over. In in reality, unfortunately, Donald Trump isn't won over by the environment and decides to push on anyway. So, we're actually at the San Francisco Green Film Festival. We just heard yesterday that they, they we've got permission to show Local Hero. Hero, the the full feature, and then you've been trumped as a double bill, which wow. will be it will be interesting. Very fun, very cool. I, I loved that aspect of the film. And and one other thing, Michael. Sorry, before you go, um, <laughs> there was I want to uh, just say something for that Dr. Kennedy, because there was a moment where uh, somebody else who evidently bought. Trump's line, hook, line, and sinker, uh, gave him an honorary degree from a university there in um, F um, in Aberdeen. Yes, in Aberdeen, yep. and a uh, Dr. Kennedy, who had been the principal of part of the school or a school for a long, long time, got who had his own previously bestowed honorary degree, decided decided, like the Vietnam vets, to give back his honorary degree, not That's wanted, right. if, if they were going to choose the likes of Donald Trump to receive one. Exactly. Dr. David Kennedy I loved that. is the former principal of that university, and he was so outraged when the university announced that it was going to give Donald Trump an honorary degree, um, a doctorate, an honorary doctorate, um, for, for basically for making money. And, you know, Dr. David Kennedy is a very principled, extremely intelligent man who said, I'm sorry, I just can't stand this. And so he decided to give back his honorary degree from the university, which he built up. I mean, I think the thing is, you yes. know, he put so much of his own life into that university. And there it was, giving Donald Trump this honorary degree. He could not stomach that. And, you know, and I think that he felt so passionately about it. He just felt, I've got to give back my own degree in protest. And he did that. It took. It was a brave decision. And I think that in the film, I mean, the number of times we've been in theatres where the audience has applauded at him doing that because I think the audience understands exactly his sentiment and his motive to do that. Good work. Great. Anthony great, Baxter, we want to thank you for coming on Live from the Heartland. Let's have a big round of applause wait, for wait. Anthony Baxter. <laughs> we All want right. to tell you <laughs> that yeah. you can see I'm going to tell him. You've Been Trumped is the name of the movie, and it's uh, got one more showing that we know of until you ask for more, and it's tomorrow night, January 22nd, at 5.15 in the afternoon, perfectly easy ride down on the L to uh, State, State and Lake, <laughs> and... Uh, uh, Gene Siskel Film Center. You can get popcorn there, too. You can. Um, okay. And uh, Anthony, thank you so much. Best of good luck. Well, thank you. Oh, it's great. It's Thanks a for great having film. me on. Thank you. All right, everybody, a couple of announcements. First, I'd like to announce on the front page of the Sun-Times this morning, it says Emanuel Shelves Library Closings. Branches will reopen on Mondays in Mayor's End Run Around Union Stalemate. Good uh, work, Union. I think Unions. that's probably good. Um, yeah. 
Tomorrow night here at the Heartland, Dave Flippo, who does some beautiful jazz uh, called Flippo Music, he'll be here. Uh, we got the whole hip hop. Seven o'clock. Hip hop next pouring. door in the Red Line tomorrow. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to look at the uh, archives of previous radio shows of the Live from the Heartland show. You would go to youtube.com slash Heartland Media. Some of you know that you can listen anywhere in the world online at WLUW.org. And now I'm going to repeat it again Justin.tv. And let me just get it right slash Heartland Cafe Media. You can watch us as we do the show. He's got um, a good video presence when he puts the paper really close like well, that. Well, I need glasses. I got another. Uh, <laughs> problem. Okay, you know, love, 70 got cataracts. I love it. All right, All right. so uh, we want to thank everybody who makes this show possible. Lisa Smith, Laura Herman, downtown we have Eli Sloan, we have uh, Angel Herrera on duty, we have uh, Paul and Mary Wozniak, and Laura we, Herman's out there in D.C. We thank all of you for tuning in, and we thank all of the Heartland Breakfasters for putting up with this radio show every Saturday morning. Well, there's a lot of people I notice who come regularly I and know. listen. I know. All <laughs> right, and we want to encourage you to do good in the world. The world needs all the good that you do. And today, I think uh, we're going to, instead of Jimi Hendrix taking us out, we're going to listen to a little Johnny Otis, uh, the late, great Johnny Otis. He's the one who discovered uh, uh, Etta James. God both bless of them you, died Etta James. Last week, and we're sorry to miss them both, but we're going to listen to their music forever. So here you get a little Johnny Otis. All power to, to the people. The people.